Hello and welcome to this special show on Rajya Sabha Television, wherein we bring you all the details of India's fight against COVID-19. Now, all of us know, and we have witnessed uh, in the past five to six weeks, and specifically, we brought all these aspects uh, to you on our show as well. This particular show about how technology has been at the forefront of this fight against uh, COVID-19 pandemic in various ways and means to try and find quick and workable solutions to all the challenges which have been thrown to us, and now. In this situation, the next big challenge is to go ahead and reboot or reopen the economy. And wherein, in this particular uh, sector, what is it that science, technology, and research can contribute in terms of ensuring that it is a sustainable march ahead from here onwards, uh, and to tackle all the challenges? Uh, something which is known as restart. that is reopening the economy through contributions from science technology and research so for this we have with us a very distinguished panel of guests let me first introduce them to you beginning with professor ashutosh sharma he is the secretary of uh, department of science and technology and also the chairperson of uh, tdb that is technology development board we also have with us uh, dr vk saraswata the member from niti aayog and we also have uh, mr dilip chinoy the secretary general of uh, fikki with us the industry representative let me begin with you professor sharma and let's try and understand what exactly do we mean by this concept restart and how important is the role of science technology and research in this rebooting or reopening or restarting of the economy right namaskar uh, certainly science and technology and innovation uh, is the foundation on which uh, our Uh, solutions and our strategies and our policy and our regulations uh, would be built uh, so so it's a very uh, timely thing to discuss now going forward opening up what is it that we need uh, so i would start with four t's uh, of mm -hmm. opening up uh, which is uh, testing uh, tagging tracing and tracking mm -hmm. right so each one of these actually involves a fair bit of good technology effective technology uh and then you know i think about what do you do when you open uh, well you need a uh, sanitization and disinfection systems in place i'm not just talking about you know uh, washing your hands certainly that's very important uh, but sanitizing the whole space periodically and for that you need for example robots uh, that carry with them a uh, deep uv light it carry with them the mist hydrogen peroxide you need tunnels in which people would pass through and get uh, sanitized uh, so all of that uh, as well as going forward maybe we need anti viral coatings uh, mm -hmm. for our fabrics for our surfaces uh, and so on uh, also remember that when you shut down a factory and when you open it again uh, that's a very complex process because once you are working in a steady state then you just keep working nothing happens Uh, but you need to do hazard analysis for example when you open up a plant uh, mm -hmm. and so so that nothing no accident uh, happens in that process and that's all very fairly established uh, science uh, and engineering and we ought to make use of it uh, then uh, of course um, uh, we make use of industry 4o processes wherever possible uh, for example so that you don't have high density of people working everywhere that you can remotely monitor uh, what's going on and in fact have remote uh, interventions which are required uh, for this so as much as possible we 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 make use of ICT uh, we should make use of artificial intelligence machine learning and so on uh, and that could be a great enabler uh, for shifting into high gear uh, with new sense of safety confidence uh, and enthusiasm of course at the same time we need to empower the industry with knowledge with information with data and all of this requires that our scientists uh, which have very deep knowledge of uh, almost anything that you can drum up uh, that we reach out to them we have a strong connect with them uh, domain specialist uh, because everything is a little bit different right when you are working in a petrochemical plant versus when you are doing manufacturing uh, dry manufacturing and so on uh, so all of that is available then there is of course the things about masking about ppes about oxygen support uh, all the emergency services ought to be available on site uh, and therefore a uh, very important thing is diagnostics uh, right so imagine that you want to start traveling uh, right to start uh, aviation sector 
start hotels, start schools, start uh, colleges and factories and industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so clearly, uh, the inexpensive rapid testing uh, is what is going to help us uh, first and foremost, because this is where the chain of testing and tagging and tracking uh, mm -hmm. actually starts. All right. Uh, so all of these things uh, going forward uh, in terms of zoning. And now we say, look, we cannot lock down everybody. So therefore, there's a clear understanding of what needs to be locked down to what extent, what, what is the uh, uh, extent of mixing uh, between the zones and so on. And, and for that, you need very good uh, geospatial uh, digital data on block level. Mm -hmm. uh, so all of that is happening. Uh, and so therefore, no matter how you look at it, there are so many different facets of science and technology uh, that would help us uh, go forward uh, okay. in opening up industry. Okay, so clearly it looks like, you know, the entire spectrum of economic activity is uh, one way or the other linked with the science and technology solutions. Right, let's now bring in uh, Dr. V.K. Saraswat here. Dr. Saraswat, uh, what are your views on how science and technology have now become the key drivers of long-term economic growth? Now, I think you have seen in the last 45 days the major role which has been played by science and technology in mitigating many of the problems uh, which came across, whether it was related to testing, whether it was related to drugs, it related to vaccine, ventilators, all kinds of things which were required for the health infrastructure of the country came through the various uh, ovens of science and technologies like the IITs, the, the DST institutions, the CSIR institutions, the DRDU institutions and many of the uh, ICMRs and so on. Now, obviously, this shows that country has got the basic uh, understanding of how to translate its work in a very accelerated manner and meet the demands. Mm -hmm. And without this R&D, which has been done in the past, I think we would not be in a position to meet these challenges. Now, the challenge which is going to come henceforth is like a continued impact of COVID-19, not for just few months. It is going to be for a much longer period. Obviously, it requires that we have to evolve ourselves to handle what is called living in a new normal. Mm -hmm. If you are living in a new normal, we have to now change our tactics. Now, what is the tactics we have to change? If you are looking at R&D, R&D itself cannot now start thinking of taking on mega projects because we are likely to have serious fiscal problems because of the economic slowdown. So we'll have to divide our R&D endeavors in such a manner that we take up smaller projects and deliver and mm -hmm. deliver in such a manner that we are able to get value to it. Value will be related to health infrastructure today because we need to continue supporting the COVID related health requirements which will come. We need to support the small industry owners. As Professor Archdoj was mentioning, our emphasis will be more on drugs. Our emphasis will be more on vaccines. Our emphasis will be on on even agriculture, which will be now we have to look at agriculture from field to fork. We can't say mm -hmm. that we have to use wheat. We have to also see how the wheat goes into various products. The, 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 the vegetables go into various products, so food processing, all kinds of things have to be taken care of in this. One thing which came out in the in this last 45, 50 days very clearly that our industry and even R&D to some extent is fairly dependent upon import. Now, this dependence on import could be very, very dangerous in the future. And hence, we have to look at that how much self-reliance we can gain so that our dependence on this import could be minimized. And even, okay. if wherever the, even if wherever the import is there, we have to ensure that we have multi-nodal nodes available for getting those items. Our dependence on a particular country should not be mm -hmm. there. We have to mm -hmm. ensure that we have many, many sources from where we can get this item. These factories which are going to open tomorrow, they cannot continue to work in the same way as they were working in the, yesterday. They mm -hmm. have to bring in safety as the primary parameter. They have to bring in supply chain to be done using the modern technology of blockchain and artificial intelligence and deep learning and things like that. They okay. have to also make more and more companies IT enabled. They should learn how to remotely work. They should make work from home as a normal. So all these things will have to be enabled by the science and technology and innovation. Okay, so so that also you know takes into consideration as to how the new normal has to be 
worked upon. And uh, taking that to uh, you know the industry representative here, uh, Mr. Chinoy, from the industry's perspective, you know the new normal which we are looking at right now, and which Dr. Saraswat was mentioning, and the way science and technology has to play a very important role here. How do you see the work? being done in the industry and that role being played by science and tech or the tech innovations, the increasing role from here onwards? I think the first thing that has happened with COVID-19 is the increased partnership between government, government laboratories and industry. This kind of a partnership has never actually happened in such a short time with focused outputs ever before in the country. And for mm -hmm. that, the science and technology uh, in, uh, you know, min, uh, infrastructure and the leadership and the Niti Aayog you know, actually deserve great compliments. The second thing what you're going to see is that for us as a nation to overcome, whether it's in agriculture, as Dr. Saraswat said, or in the different aspects of Industry 4.0, this partnership has to get deeper and has to actually strengthen and focus on the requirements of India and how we can make India a relevant uh, you know, force in the science and technology world going forward. Mm -hmm. Now, if any opening up, right? So you heard about sanitization, about the mask, about social distancing, about the reorientation of processes. Now, innovation here is actually very relevant in the current context. So if you take a manufacturing line, where you have people adjacent to each other, you have two options. Either you change your manufacturing process or like a, com a company did uh, in the automotive field, created and designed a plastic separator between the two ad adjacent uh, people so that their interaction with them goes, uh, you know, actually does not happen. And similarly for the person in front, created another plastic shield. Now creating the plastic shield is, you might say, a very simple thing, but integrating it with the functioning of the machine, ensuring that safety and all comes is actually where technology and uh, you know, science and innovation comes. It's a very, very simple example. Mm -hmm. This would be required in schools. If you see pictures of what's happening in China, these low-cost systems will be required in schools, in colleges, and the whole education system going forward. The manpower intensive nature of agriculture, whether it's the tea plantations or the coffee plantations, we need, again, simple solutions there. Now, unfortunately, the choice between India to go into full-scale autom automation and robotics is actually perhaps not there. We have to find a bridge because we have a large, young population who need to be employed. So again, we have to actually have this partnership between science and technology and industry and other stakeholders to ensure that we find solutions which are cost effective. And you know, Dr. Saraswat mentioned this, uh, you know, we, we, we need to manage our costs well and to make it so that we can actually replicate this and provide it for the rest of the world. It is actually possible. So if you look at okay. industry, you know, uh, it, there's a medicine stream, whether it, it is the uh, collaboration between Bhar, uh, Bharat Biotech or Serum, uh, Serum uh, you know, Institute, or if you look at making ventilators, low-cost ventilators, which is the, again, you know, the, uh, how do you scale up ventilator manufacturing? And if you look at, you know, how do textile units actually get into manufacturing low-cost PPE equipment and, you know, automotive companies start making face masks. They have modified their manufacturing lines and the modified their processes to actually develop products which you know we want, or even alcohol companies making sanitizers. So mm -hmm. it is all it is all different examples where industry and government have actually come together to address this. Now, when you restart industry, the whole processes have to be re-looked at. You know, okay. uh, Professor uh, Professor Sarasvat talked about work from home, the technology, the cyber security. You know, the, the Indian system of having an Indian video conferencing system, the challenge that was uh, set up by Meti, you know, you are holding this itself, this panel discussion through the use of technology. So Definitely. how does the media, how does everybody change? Would movie making change? And, and, this, is a, of, and this is the 25th such uh, episode we're doing via technology. Yeah. So in the, each section of industry, you know, whether it is civil aviation, whether it is shipping, whether it is warehousing, will have to use science and technology, will have to innovate their systems and processes. And like Dr. Saraswat and both Professor Sharma said, in the new normal, one thing is certain that things are going to change. 
and Definitely. science and technology is going to play a great role in enabling that change to happen. Definitely. Change is the only constant, as it is being said. And the collaboration between government agencies and the private industry is also the cornerstone of this entire thing. Yeah, let me uh, bring back Professor Sharma. Hey, Professor Sharma, from the policy point of view, in terms of policy interventions of what we are talking about here as to what needs to be done from here onwards, how can it be done? What are the key policy initiatives which have been taken or will be taken in the future so that this amalgamation between the science and technology and industry, fulfilling each other's uh, needs or requirements uh, happens smoothly. Yes, uh, Dr. Saraswat talked about it, Mr. Chinoy talked about it, and I will put it in little different words, but a similar sentiment. So, so I was looking at what actually made us so successful in the last month or two with the speed and now reaching scale. Uh, the, the first aspect is that, of course, we have very deep strengths in R&D. Uh, we have great scientists, we have infrastructure, and which can all be shown to be true based on a whole lot of statistics. So now, what is it that has been missing? Well, what we have been missing is a common purpose, a clear direction, a clear and present need uh, in which different stakeholders come together seamlessly because they share this. Uh, at the same time, we know that if there's something, let's say a ventilator of certain design, uh, if we could make it, uh, working together, then there's a market for it. So, so this is basically, we need a seamless chain of R&D going to technology translation, uh, going to developing technology, developing prototype, developing designs, developing manufacturing and developing markets. Mm -hmm. Now it so happens that in this case, they all come together uh, and there is no confusion about it as to what is needed. And there are people who are working together to make it possible. So this is to be translated in policy. Now, I'll give you an example. Uh, you see, in, in drugs and vaccine manufacturing, uh, we are very good. We supply vaccines and drugs to everybody. But in fact, we have been a little bit weak there in terms of basic research and developing new drugs uh, and developing new vaccines. There have been limited examples of that happening. Mm -hmm. Whereas in most of the other things, if you take electronics, if you take 5G, you take a whole lot of other manufacturing, uh, if we are weak in manufacturing, not so much weak in uh, designing, for example. Most of the big design centers uh, are around here in India, but they don't go to manufacturing. So, so we need to find uh, the weak link. Uh, it depends on the sector. So that weak link has to be plugged. So we have to have an end-to-end -end ecosystem uh, which mm -hmm. goes from knowledge generation to knowledge uh, consumption, if you would. Second okay. thing, as was rightly pointed out, uh, is that people working together. So if you have uh, a very um, uh, very well-defined objective, uh, a direction, which means that the industry has to come in and pull the knowledge. A and so working with FIKI, working with CII in the future, DST mm -hmm. and other, other agencies, uh, when we are supporting research, if we knew actually what is the relevant research, what is actually needed, uh, this is going to happen. I have no doubt at all about that, uh, mm -hmm. that this could happen and this could be translated uh, in terms of policies, can be translated in terms of new programs uh, and the ways that we actually work together. Uh, okay. So I think that that's a critical aspect to, to find out that we, we need, look at 5G. I mean, we can design everything in this country. But, but what about the takers? So the second aspect of this is projecting your demand, whether it is by the government, whether it is by the industry. If we can project that demand and say, look, this is the product I need. Uh, these are the parameters of that product. This is the price uh, base that I'm looking at. If we can say that very clearly, that I have no doubt uh, that our scientific community, our uh, development community, innovate, uh, innovations, startups and so on, all of them can actually deliver the solution that meet your needs. But, Definitely. But, Definitely. but we have to be sure that there's a market for it. Okay, right? that's, that's, that's a very significant point out there and ensuring that end-to-end -end ecosystem is also put in place. Weak links are, uh, you know, plugged in this entire ecosystem. Uh, before I go to uh, Dr. Saraswat uh, for, uh, you know, more on this and concluding comments, uh, anything would you, you would like to add in terms of what industry would be looking forward to uh, when these policy interventions are being talked about, Mr. Chinoy? Oh, I think uh, Professor Sharma has actually articulated, articulated it well. He's also identified the sectors. 
you know the one thing that you know we have also talked about this in 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 the in the past is we need a system of you know technology and uh, you know identification and technology forecasting and you know looking at a collaborative effort to address challenges of the future you know so artificial intelligence uh, virtual reality artificial uh, you know reality or augmented reality you know what is it actually going to help and again the transportation systems of the future uh, as well as the whole supply chain of the future are mm-hmm. going to be very very different so in a collaborative way we actually have to you know uh, take a white board and paint the future on it and then collaborate to ensure that it becomes a reality mm-hmm. okay so collaboration again is the key word out there along with innovation uh, dr saraswatta from your point of view and 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 the, in terms of concluding comments on this particular show how do you see a uh, new age technology playing a very very important role as you spoke about earlier artificial intelligence robotics and all that will become really important specifically for the manufacturing sector i have no doubts that the new technologies the frontier technologies are going to play a major role as far as transformation of the industry globally is concerned mm-hmm. but i think what professor shano dr shano mentioned about uh, indianization of these frontier technologies is very important mm-hmm. i have always said indianized industry 4.0 that means i cannot have robotics i cannot have automation unless man is somewhere in the loop that's very important for a country like india so we have to reach those levels of automation where safety and quality derive them but not so much productivity productivity will come by multiplication of the lines and things like that but safety and quality that will certainly come and you will get the scale there out so that is one part it will certainly play a major role but if you want to reboot the economy through the r&d i think the most important part which is remaining to be answered here is that results of the r&d has to be demand has to be protected by giving the market pull the market pull is that whatever is today the ventilator was developed produced and taken by the health services now mm-hmm. that is a kind of pull which is needed for all products which come out from the r&d uh, infrastructure of the country now that is where we have to make sure that r&d in the private sector is incentivized r&d products which are being developed are protected from the global mar- global competition at least for some time you may have a sunset clause maybe 5 years i will ensure that equivalent product coming from outside will have a duty so that my product is at least provided support mm-hmm. and if i am exporting i am being incentivized so this kind of a thing will be there we have another opportunity window which is coming where r and d as well as production will get benefited a large yeah. number large number of industries are likely to peel off from china so if i look at my fdi policy today if i can ensure that the fdi policy incentivizes these industries in terms of power land transport capital line of credit and many other things with respect to the market i'm sure instead of these companies going to vietnam and cambodia and indonesia and malaysia they will find indian manpower indian human resource indian ecosystem much more favorable so this is an opportunity we have both for r and d with the multinational agencies as well as for production we will have a great a great in, um, possibility we should certainly do that mm-hmm. finally i would like to mention last point on this there has to be consistency as far as our rules and regulations are concerned if we have a varying degree of rules and regulations the industry gets affected we don't know what is going to happen tomorrow now post covid as such there is going to be uncertainty in many areas now we have to formulate our policy in such a manner that these undulations due to covid 19 are ironed out through our policy initiatives so they have to be factored when we do the r and d policy and r and d to market policy okay so there it is uh, opportunities and challenges galore and the ways to go ahead and find solutions and assimilate uh, 
properly so that we can restart effectively, that is reopening of economy with the help of science, technology and research, as our panelists have pointed out. These are the broad contours of how science and technology and research and development, that is R&D, can contribute towards the long-term economic growth, specifically with the new age technologies. Thank you so much, Dr. Saraswat, Professor Ashito Sharma, and Mr. Dilip Chanoy as well for your views here on the show. We'll come back again with a different topic, but till then, you not only keep watching Rajasabha television, but also take good care of yourself, follow all the guidelines as far as this battle against COVID-19 is concerned, specifically the social distancing norms, and we will definitely emerge victorious. Thank you once again.